Good afternoon, Peter Gertz, I'm a psychiatrist. Is mental illness hereditary? Fascinating question. And the short answer probably is it can be, overall the short answer. So one example is Huntington's disease, a neurologic or a genetic disease, an inherited disease characterized by neurologic and psychiatric problems is hereditary but they're gray areas so let's and it's based on what we call trinucleotide repeats on the chromosomes and if you have 40 or more of those trinucleotide repeats you pretty much always get the disease at some point in life it generally occurs later in life and if you have 35 of those trinucleotide repeats or less you generally do not get the disease, but there's that transition of 36 to 39 trinucleotide repeats where you can or may not, or where you may or may not get the disease. So that's fascinating to me because there's no total clear cutoff and that may show that there is both nature or are both nature and nurture at play. So in other words, if someone has 36 to 39, someone in that range trinucleotide repeats, maybe other influences affect the DNA in ways that either make them get the disease or not, because those people may or may not get the disease. So we're talking about nature and nurture, and it seems like both are at play. And specifically for psychiatry in schizophrenia, if we look at identical twins, they do not have what we call 100% concordance. So what they have is about 50% concordance for schizophrenia. So that means if identical twins are looked at and one of the twins gets schizophrenia, the other twin, the other identical twin, only has a 50% chance of getting schizophrenia. So that's fascinating to me because it shows that schizophrenia is not entirely genetic. And another aspect is if we look at Darwin's theory of evolution and compare it with Lamarck's theory of evolution, and let's take the example of giraffes with long necks. Darwin's way of looking at that would have been that giraffes with long necks were more likely to survive, and then over many generations, the giraffes with shorter necks died out and the ones that had taller, longer necks were left over. So that's why overall then the giraffes had longer necks. Lamarck's way of looking at it was that giraffes during their lives had to stretch a lot to get food from trees. So they worked on their neck and that caused direct changes in their in the way they, in their biology in some way, so that then the next generation had longer necks because the giraffes stretched their necks so much that they passed that stretching on to further to the next generations. And probably it looks like both Darwin had a point and Lamarck had a point. So again, it's probably a combination of things that go on in genetics. So Lamarck's way of looking at it would have been the way epigenetics functions. And epigenetics means that during someone's life, let's say your brother got schizophrenia, your identical twin brother got schizophrenia, but you don't get it. So during your life, there were some factors that affected your DNA most likely and made you not get it. So epigenetics talks about genes that, well, in general, genes are inherited and during life, as per epigenetics, certain genes are turned on, certain genes are turned off. And what makes certain genes get turned on or off is potentially chemical exposure, exposure to toxins, different diets, and possibly stress. So it's a fascinating issue to me 
And the bottom line at this point seems to be that there are definitely things that are inherited, like Huntington's. However, there are also things that happen during people's lives that affect their DNA. So for instance, via diet or maybe stress, and certain genes are turned off, certain genes are turned on, and what was inherited is a basis, but then that can be modulated, modified during life via epigenetic changes. And that may explain, for example, like I've mentioned, that one identical twin gets schizophrenia, but the other identical twin does not. Thank you.